Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. We're at that time of the year where university is starting back up and we're getting new students to come in. And so now that I've finished my first year and I'm actually going into my second year of university, I thought I'd make a video of a collection of advice on how to get ready for university. Just a disclaimer, my first year was not amazing. It was 2020 um, and I also go to university in Auckland, which meant that we went through two lockdowns. So obviously, um, w I can't give the most accurate advice ever, but I still learned some things that are still relevant for every university student as they go back to university. But before I get into this video, I need to make it very clear that university is nothing like high school. Unless you went to a liberal school like I did, you are really not prepared for university from high school. My high school treated us like we were university students, but even then there were things that I was not prepared for. So before I get into the advice that you should take on of going into university, I'd like to say, I'd like to explain the differences of high school and university. The main thing is that university is completely independent. No one is following up on you. Your tutors are not going to say how far are you with this unless they're having a genuine conversation with you and you get along with them. They're not going to say, hey, you didn't submit your assignment. You know, no one's ever going to do that with you. You are completely driving yourself and you have to do everything yourself. Literally, all that's given to you are the instructions on how to pass and you're there. No one cares if you're on your phone during a class. If you're on your phone in class, so what? You're going to be the one that misses out on the information. So if you fail, that's your own fault. University has strict and hard deadlines. It's nothing like high school where you can get a deadline pretty easily, not going to lie, unless you've got a really nice lecturer. But the thing is, what's even more difficult about these deadlines is sometimes you've got your weekly essays like I've had, or another situation is you could literally just have two weeks between each assignment deadline and that's it, you know, you've got two weeks and then you've got to work on your next assignment because that's due in another two weeks. Also what you've got to remember is that everyone at the university is an adult. It's not like a high school where you've got little year nine and tens running around. You're literally surrounded by adults and as soon as you walk off campus, if you're at my university, you're literally in the CBD. If you're studying full time as well, you are expected to put in 40 hours a week. Um, that is the equivalent of a full-time job, so that it needs to be kept in consideration. If you're doing a 15-point course, you are expected to be putting in 10 hours a week. So now here are the tips on how to do well at university. So the first bit of tip that I've got is to put your phone away when you're doing your readings and your assignments. I need to kind of focus a bit more on this myself, not gonna lie. Um, you know, while I'd get my assignments done quickly and early, I'd still be a bit distracted sometimes. What I recommend for you to do is just to put your phone into your bag and just work away. Or what you could do is literally just put do not disturb on or like have a blacklist on your phone and that just blocks everything. The second piece of advice that I need to give you is to do your readings. They're there for a reason um, and you know, the lecturers they spent a lot of time finding these relevant readings to aid the lectures and to aid you for the assignments. And please, whatever you do, don't be that person who... There are a lot of them, actually, in university. You'd actually be surprised. Don't be the person who asks the lecturer, do we have to read the required readings? Please don't be that person. They are so annoying. The third piece of advice is to actually schedule some time off from work. So this is something that I learned in my first semester to do. In my first semester, I used to wake up at about six o'clock and I'd start working from about 9 a.m. and I'd be working until 11 p.m. at night. And I did that for a few weeks back to back and I really suffered from it. I got really, really ill and literally taking a day off where I just didn't do any work literally made me recover the next day. Schedule some time off and don't put so much pressure on yourself. If you put too much work in and you put too much pressure on you, you're really going to suffer from it and it's not fun. And even just say, today, I'm not even going to read my emails. My fourth bit of advice is to see your friends from high school and the friends who don't go to uni or the same uni as you, just to keep those social connections strong. Because those who are not in uni, those who are not in uni yet, or who go to a different uni, or who are taking a gap year or working, 
they can literally just take your mind off everything. But also seeing those friends from high school literally just lets you relax because in high school you can relax a lot more. The separation from work and life and also just allowing yourself to breathe a bit more. Also social connections in general is just really nice because then you get to see what other people are doing in life so that way your world is not absorbed with university. My fifth bit of advice is to have a good study system. This is something that I need to work on a bit better because the first two semesters I've been pretty bad with revision. The first time was slack and the second time was the election in the US and I was just constantly watching over it. But make sure you are revising over time. Make sure you're finding a study technique that works for you. Um, and also just make sure that you are studying and not just like putting it off because I know a lot of people don't actually study in high school. I didn't really study in high school um, and that really has affected me when I get into university. My sixth bit of advice is to not copy the slides down in your lectures. See it happen all the time in my lectures and it is just the most frustrating thing on the planet. You're wasting your time. Those lecture slides are literally going to be up on the internet very soon. Like, if you use Canvas, your lecturer will put the slides on Canvas. If you use Blackboard, your lecturer will put it on Blackboard. It's literally there for you to be able to access forever. So literally don't do that. If you've got a good lecturer, they'll be building off the slides. So literally they'll read out a point that's on the slide and they'll delve into it. And that's the things you should be copying down. A lecturer is n not intended for you to write as much as you can down. A lecture's intention is for you to be able to hold an idea in your mind and be able to write it out while also listening for more information. Also, sometimes the lecturer will actually give out guiding questions at the beginning of the lecture where they'll say, here are some questions you should think about throughout the lecture and use those questions, maybe copy those questions down, but use those questions to take notes. My seventh tip is to keep an ear out for hints for the exam. Literally, the lecturers want you to do well. They don't want anyone to fail. One of my lecturers in semester two last year literally said anything in an orange or yellow box in any of the slides is important for the exam. One of my lecturers from last semester for the exam prep lecture, she literally said, so for this concept, my note here says to give a really long pause after saying this concept so they get the hint. If your lecturer is nice enough, they will pretty much tell you the questions. My eighth tip is to talk to people in your lectures and tutorials. It literally makes a social bubble within that course in particular, and maybe you'll find out someone who's doing another course in that same course as you. So literally you've got a friend already in that other course and that helps you build your social circle a bit more. And also that just helps with other assignments coming up because then you can feed off each other, trade notes, um, and discuss concepts and your own ideas. My mum's been to university three times and she said that she's lucky that she didn't have a lonely experience, but she knows a lot of people who did find a lonely experience because they just wouldn't put in any effort to keep in contact with people. My ninth tip is as soon as the semester starts, get into the work. Like, don't just have a whole week of procrastination. Like, just go for it. Like, even though I said in my vlog when I went back to uni for semester two, I said I'm not gonna work as hard. I still put in a bit of work. I still did readings. I still did all this work. It's just that from week two, I really put in the 40 hour weeks, but I still put in about like 30 hours in week one. My 10th bit of advice is very relevant for the time we're living in right now. And that is to be prepared and be flexible. Literally, especially if you're in Auckland, you'll know how quickly things can change. Um, we're living in a pandemic right now, and especially if you're in New Zealand, alert level one is not alert level none. We still have the risk of COVID getting back into the community, and in that situation, you have to be prepared for us to move very quickly. I still remember at 9.30pm on August 11, when it was announced that Auckland was going back into level three the next day. A lockdown could happen at any moment. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below any other useful tips that you've got first years if you don't, if you've already started uni. Subscribe if you haven't because I make a new video every week and I hope to see you in another video.